Coming up on today's show, the new fall TV season is here, and we tell you what sci-fi and fantasy shows you need to watch and what to avoid. Then we'll show you an experiment to amaze your friends during commercial breaks. All that plus your feedback about time travel on this episode of We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is sponsored by Audible. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we tune in and turn on to the future only for it to drop out on us and become the present. I'm Annalie Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. It's fall and you know what that means. All the new TV shows are coming out. Now what should we spend our precious hours watching? I don't know about you, but I'm going to go for Arrow. Now I love the old green Arrow comics with like the beardy Ollie, hippie Ollie, mm -hmm. and the new C CW series is kind of a spin-off on Smallville with the young Green Arrow, no beard, mm -hmm. and it's just all just smolder, smolder, You're smolder. You're not worried about the Smallville taint? Shirt off. Smolder, smolder, smolder. <laughs> So, so either, you're obviously not worried about the Smallville taint. <laughs> well, either I will love it or I will love to hate it. Mm -hmm. So Good I went point. Ever, either way. I, there's another CW show coming up next week, Beauty and the Beast, because mm -hmm. we need another Beauty and the Beast. Um, and this one looks great, actually. It's more Smolder. Beauty is a wisecracking detective, and Beast is kind of like the Hulk. He's, he's more of a kind of thing. Looks very tasty. I saw the, the uh, pilot, and it was great. In the sadness department about TV, I'm already kind of bummed about the J.J. Abrams produced show Revolution, which sounded great on paper. It's a post-apocalypse where all the electricity in the country and in the world has gone away. People mm -hmm. are fighting with swords. Nice. There's like, you know, all these factions in the U.S. fighting for, for dominance. But so far, it's been really uneven. There's been a lot of whining, not enough sword play. There's never enough sword play, but yeah, I can... It's just like, oh, I'm sad. My dad's gone, right? Yeah, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of dad whininess. So let's hope that gets better because I think it actually. I, I have some hopes that the showrunner Eric Kripke, who did the best seasons of Supernatural, can really pull it out of a slump and, and turn it into something awesome. Okay, I'm the one I'm kind of just confused by is the 666 Park Avenue one, I know. where it has a <laughs> great frillion, title. A frillion <laughs> characters, and it's about you know a haunted demon apartment building. Like Satan is your landlord yeah. kind Satan of Satan is your scenario. landlord, yeah. and then this innocent couple are your like caretakers of the building. Oh no, what will happen to them? Yeah, well, and first every I'll character is like a neurotic flutist who likes yeah. Flan, who has some complicated relationship with like the demon of Flan. Well, I don't... Uh, I think you'll find that the word is flautist, oh. so. <laughs> This is, I think, going to be the new show that we all love to hate. You know, yeah. we're all going to be watching it or pretending to be watching it. You know, so yeah. the one bright spot I would say so far this season is the new season of Person of Interest, which um, was great last year, and this year has gone full science fiction with our two subversive um, characters actually teaming up with a machine who is an AI. Last mm -hmm. season we weren't sure if this machine that could predict when crimes might happen was an AI or if it was just a really complicated computer. Now we know for sure that this show is really going to be looking at like what does it mean to have artificial intelligence and it's so exciting. It's really well acted. Um, it's just it's a great show. So if you haven't okay. been watching Person of Interest, start tuning in. You don't that's need to watch, to watch last season. You just just start now. But what if you want entertainment that's more hands-on? Now, we can show you how to amuse yourself if the TV show you pick isn't doing it for you. In this week's Esther Gets Experimental. Today we're going to make something disappear. Granted, it's just Pyrex, but uh, good enough. We're going to start pouring oil into the Pyrex dish in the middle of this regular glass dish. No big deal, no big deal. So what would make this disappear? Well, um, each material has a kind of refraction index for light, which means that light kind of gets distorted or changed as it goes through. Like through water? Yeah. But if, say, something had the same refraction index as Pyrex, say vegetable oil, like what we light would here. not distort as it went through. And stop pouring we wouldn't be able to see it anymore. Voila, the Pyrex has disappeared. Wow. All right, so we're gonna drop this guy into it. You can see he stops well before the bottom, but you can't see the actual dish. 
All right. Whoa. Now, you could see that dish a little because it had fluting in itself, but we're going to try this again with a um, beaker that's pretty plain. I'm going to put it in and kind of scoop up a little so it's filled up with oil. And there you go. It should be visible above the water. I'm just going to add a invisible, little. invisible, except for the little numbers on the side below. Isn't light wonderful? Very So oily. you can literally do this with stuff from your kitchen if you have like a Pyrex pie dish or something. Next time, TV lets you down. Mmm, oily. And on that note, a word from our sponsor. We all love to read, but sometimes there's just not enough free time in the day, which is why Audible.com is freaking handy. You can download audiobooks from Audible.com to your iPod or MP3 player and play them back anywhere, anytime. And with over 100,000 titles to choose from, Audible.com has something for everyone. There's thrillers, drama, comedy, business history, and of course, our favorite, science fiction and fantasy. Here's one title I recommend that you check out, Dark Currents by Jacqueline Carey. It just came out and it's the start of a new trilogy that sounds awesome. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash future to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. So catch up on your reading, help out our show, and snag a free audiobook by visiting audiblepodcast.com slash future. We've had a lot of responses to last week's episode on the science of time travel. One viewer, Styx, had some problems with the physicist Sean Carroll's take on Back to the Future. Styx wrote in, okay, problem with the physicist's issue with Back to the Future. In it, Doc Brown even states that what would happen if you changed the past would be an alternate timeline. It wouldn't be instantaneous change. It would have happened over the 30-year period. The catch is that you just bypassed those years personally. It's interesting because a lot of people do think that Back to the Future, the whole series, is one of the best time travel narratives out there. And it's interesting because we were also talking about Bill and Ted uh, last week mm -hmm. as being a great example of realistic time travel, if you can even say that. It's strange to me that comedies seem to be what get it right. Like, why is comedy so good at I time guess travel? your best time travel if you don't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's a comedy. I think it's kind of a tragedy because, yes, Marty's family is much better off after he changed the past and they went through to the present. But, I mean, he knows the people where he didn't change the past. He grew up with them. So now, all of a sudden, he has this entirely new family with all different personalities and in a whole different history that he doesn't know. It is really creepy. It reminds yeah. me of Looper, um, which is a great time travel drama that just came out. And in that, we see the same thing where somebody in the present is changing a future version of themselves and a future version of their family. And as the people in the present are acting, the people from the future their memories are changing. And so it creates this really creepy, paranoid feeling where like you're you're feeling your life being rewritten as you remember it. And yeah. it's pretty disturbing. Yeah, yeah. That, that is disturbing, but I mean, at least you remember it. This guy, it's like, oh, but I have a whole- But you lose your old memories. Yep. So you're watching your, you know, it's like the dark Marty McFly experience. You know, you're watching this past that you had disappear. Yeah, but at least you know the new people. It's not like, oh, I have a stranger as a dad. I'm sure I won't miss my old dad. <laughs> okay, well, He wasn't that's assertive enough. Screw him. <laughs> yeah, f*** that dad. All right, well, that's, that's a question for another show. So if you want to weigh in on anything we've done, email us at wecomefromthefuture at revision3.com. And if you want to see more of the show, you can find us on iTunes by searching for io9. And you can subscribe to us on YouTube by clicking right here. And we'll see you next week after you've watched a lot of bad TV in the future.